Hello again, beautiful calculus students. We're going to cover now the last really major and important method for finding integrals. This one's called integration by parts. And let me give a little graphic illustration of what integration by parts does for us. Suppose we have a graph, and I'm going to call these axes uh, u and v. So I don't want you to think they're x and y, that one's always horizontal, the other's vertical, it doesn't have to be like that. I'm just saying we have two different variables that are involved in some function. And we have a curve, that's a function of u, or it's inverse, a function of v. And we know the area of that, right? I can know that out here the curve goes out to, well, let's call that just r. And in this direction, the curve uh, goes to a height of, let's call that, say, g. And so we know the area of this whole thing, it's just r times g, right? So the area of the square region is r times g. And suppose we knew the area under the curve, and we wanted to find the area to the right of the curve, or to the left of the curve, um, this region here. Suppose this is what we're looking for. Okay, and I don't want to say above or below or whatever, because again, u and v don't have to be horizontal and vertical. They're just different ways of orient, different variables that our um, function can depend on. So from this graph, we can get this very simple relationship that this area, which I'm calling red, equals the entire area, which is the area of our square, minus the area in orange. Okay, so in terms of integration, we're seeing that this area, the unknown area, depends on this product and then a known integral. Okay, so let's put this, move on here and explain this in a different way. So with that sort of um, graphical image in mind, and also the book has a, a more thorough, detailed version of that graph, graphical image, on page 515. But anyway, what integration by parts is, really, it's the integration version of the product rule. Okay, so suppose you're taking the derivative of two functions, u and v. Well, by product rule, that's u times dv dx plus v times du dx. Okay, and let's just suppose we integrate both sides now. I could just sort of write integral symbols on both sides like that. Well, the integral with respect to x of uv is just going to be uv, and that equals the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du. Okay, I'm being a little sloppy with notation here, but I'm just running through this to motivate where we're going. And suppose this is the unknown that corresponds to the red on the previous page, and this one is the known integral. So how do we write the unknown in terms of the known? Well, that's just our integration by parts. It tells us that the integral of some function u dv is u, sorry, u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, that's it. That is the whole integration by parts formula. Let's put that on the next page in nice big uh, writing. So integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du. And I always just remember this by saying this that spells voodoo. Okay, so it's going to be uv, maybe like uv light, minus voodoo. Or I suppose you could write it this way. It's vu minus voodoo. Either way. And the, the v times u part here, this is the antiderivative, so it's going to be evaluated, you know, from x equals something to x equals something else. We'll just we'll see how to use that when we do some examples. Okay, so but once again, this is the big deal. I'll do a quick example in this uh, uh, presentation, and then we'll move on and do a whole bunch more examples. Okay, this may seem like it might be difficult to memorize, but the more you work with it, the easier it will be to remember it all. Okay, simple example. Example one. <clears throat> the integral of x e to the x dx. Okay, we don't have a way of doing this. If this were e to the x squared, 
then this would be a u substitution thing, right? u equals x squared, du equals 2x, but that's not what it is. Okay, so let's undo that. We don't have an x squared. So we do not have a technique currently of doing this integral. So I need to rewrite this in a way. I'm going to recall the format of the integration by parts, integral of u dv equals u v minus integral of v du. Okay, that's what we're looking at. So I'm looking at this integrand now, or this whole expression. I need one of those to be a u, so u equals something, and a dv equals something. Okay, well, let's just try this. Let's suppose u equals x, and then our dv equals e to the x dx. Okay, so if our u is x, let's write in the rest of this. That means I need to figure out what the du is, because I need that for this part of the integral. du is just dx, and if dv is this, then v is the integral of that, which is just e to the x. So now, putting these pieces together, putting these pieces together, by integration by parts, this formula now looks like, or this equation, this integral, is uv, so these pieces go together, u and v go together, so this is going to be, so this integral now becomes x e to the x minus the integral of v du, voodoo, v e to the x du dx. Okay, that looks like it's going to work out well because we know that this is just e to the x. And so our final answer on all this is the integral becomes x e to the x minus e to the x and our big bad bold plus c. So that is the antiderivative for this example.